Okay, so far we've been modifying a lot of existing elements on the page. But what if we want to add new elements to the page? We could do that with inner HTML, writing the HTML for the tags inside the string that we pass in, like we did here. That can get a bit messy though, especially if we want to create multiple tags with different attributes, styles, and classes. So instead, we can use a whole suite of sweet document methods for creating new elements from scratch and adding them to the page. Let's say that we want to add an image of a cat to the page because we just don't think it has enough yet. The first step is to create that new image element, right? We want to create that. So we'll start off by creating a variable to store it, cat l, and then we're going to use document.create element and pass in the name of the tag we're making, img. So now you can imagine that the browser has made an image tag like this, and it's floating off in space somewhere. The next step is to assign a source to it. So cat l.src equals, and let's just grab our source from up here. And oh, we should add an alt to make this image more accessible. We haven't been doing that and really should always have alt tags on our images. So now you can imagine that this image tag that we've made has a source and it also has an alt photo of cute cat. Okay, so this is what we've made using this JavaScript here. The image tag that we made is still floating off in space because we haven't told the browser where to put it and there's so many different places in our DOM where it could go. Let's do the easiest thing and just make it show up at the bottom of the page. We can do that by sticking it at the end of the body tag. So we say document.body.appendchild cat l. Haha, -ha, there it is. It's quite large as well. Very large cat, scary. Now you can call a pen child on any existing DOM node in your page and it will make the past in element the final child of that node. This is where it helps to really visualize the DOM as a tree. The body tag is a node in that tree and it has a bunch of children like H1 and P and you're adding one more child at the end of its children. So actually it'd be after the script tag, right here. Using DOM methods, you should theoretically be able to append elements anywhere inside the DOM tree. We just put it in the easiest, most obvious spot. Okay, let's do one more example. We used inner HTML down here to put strong tags inside the spans. Instead, we could use create element. So var strong l equals document dot create element strong and I misspelled it and spelling very important. So that creates an empty strong tag floating off in space. So first thing we'll do is set the text of it. So strong l dot text content equals cat. All right. Alternatively, actually, we we could do this other thing where we create a, what's known as a text node. Uh, many DOM nodes in the DOM tree can have special types of nodes, text nodes, as their children. And these nodes aren't elements, but they are still nodes in the DOM tree. We actually call them leaf nodes because they're the very final thing that can be in a tree. So var strong text equals document dot create text node. And we'll just pass in the text cat. If we use this technique, we've now created two nodes that are floating off in space, a strong tag, and then this text node, which just says cat. And we need to connect them up to each other. And we want the strong to be the parent of cat. So what we'll do is say strong l.appendchild 
strong text. Okay, so now, now we've got the strong with cat inside. And we have to append it where we want because it's still floating off in space. So we are inside the for loop for name L's. And each name L is where we want to append the strong tag. So here, name L's I dot append child strong L. Aha. And now, actually, we see it twice because I left in the old way. So it's appending to a span tag that already has a strong in it. We could change this line to inner HTML equals empty string, which will effectively clear out the span before we append to it. Now, as you saw, that took way more lines of code than the inner HTML version. So, you know, why did we do it? Well, you know, a lot of developers don't like modifying the document this way because it, it does take a lot more code. Most developers actually use libraries like jQuery to do DOM mod modification for them, which provides functions that does the same code with a lot less lines of code for, uh, for you as the developer because you're using the library functions instead. I do kind of like writing my code this way because I like that I can see exactly how I'm modifying the DOM tree one line at a time, and it feels cleaner than shoving everything into a string of inner HTML. But maybe you hate it. Either way, now you know it exists, so you can use it if you need it. And you can understand what libraries like jQuery are actually doing behind the scenes.